Okay, so uh, first of all, let me welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to our uh, live workshop on how local platforms can drive business innovation. So first of all, let me thank you for attending this webinar, and uh, I hope it's, uh, it would be uh, meeting your expectations. So in today's webinar, we uh, would be taking we will be taking uh, talking mainly about Microsoft Power Apps uh, as a local platforms and how it can help in today's requirement to provide apps with very limited resources and short timelines and uh, having the ability to make changes to these application quickly with uh, no much delay. So before we start, let me introduce myself. I'm Firas Khiyami, I'm, Square, uh, I'm Solution Manager at Square One Technologies, and we'll be uh, taking you through a quick introduction of Square One Technologies, and uh, I'll be then introducing you to Power Apps and uh, Power Platform, and uh, uh, show you how uh, our local platforms and uh, Power Apps can help you uh, overcome the business challenges of your day-to-day -day, uh, challenges. And also we have with me, uh, my colleague, Mr. Ahmed Abu Faris, who's technical team lead. Uh, he will be giving us a live demo on Power Apps and uh, will be showing us a step-by-step -step on how we can build an app and solve one of the business cases that we have to deal in on a daily basis. So before I start, I would like to uh, let you know that at any time you have the ability to put your questions on the question and answer on the left side of this uh, application and uh, we will be uh, answering all of these questions at the end of this uh, webinar, inshallah. So let's get started. So let me give you a little bit about Square One. At Square One, we are located in different uh, cities around our, the area, and we have uh, over two, uh, 12 years of experience with 150 uh, members in our team, and we have provided over 800 successful implementations for different uh, clients. So at Square One, we focus on four main pillars. Uh, the first one, which is enter enterprise content management, automation, and data and AI and business application platforms. So in terms of uh, enterprise content management, we tend to manage all of your requirements when it comes to, to that, to, to uh, document management, uh, content management, uh, digital signature and e-signature, and managing all of these uh, document lifecycle requirements. Uh, then when it comes to data, we uh, uh, handle, we, when it comes to anything related to data visualization and data extraction and ETL uh, requirement, the uh, preparation and uh, governance of your data and so on, uh, until it goes to the business intelligence requirements. And then uh, we handle the automation. We are uh, a golden partner in uh, robotic process automation. We have very good experience on that. We help uh, organizations automate all of their business processes and uh, drive through, uh, go through the automation of their uh, entire organization. And finally, the business application platform where we provide our uh, clients with the uh, low-code platform, such as the topic that we're discussing today, uh, helping them uh, uh, provide more innovations for their application development lifecycle. So let's start by, by discussing some of the uh, challenges that are, be, uh, are, are uh, being faced today by, by the IT and uh, the business application. So first of all, you know, you have the time. The time is one of the most important points when it comes to developing application because usually uh, business users will request some requirements uh, with a limited budget and limited time and they have to go through the procurement process and they have to obtain these solutions and so on. And uh, then you have the, uh, when it comes to changes, business users tend to request changes often uh, and often times, and they would require uh, sometimes, uh, that does require you as a development team to sometimes rebuild the application or even rebuild the whole application from scratch to, uh, to, to capture these uh, uh, changes. And uh, one of the uh, essential point, which is uh, lack of uh, insights, uh, it's a very essential point that uh, it's, it's important to have a clear idea of how your application is performing and know if your users are getting benefits of your application, is it solving their problems or not? And finally, it's important to handle the uh, total cost of, uh, of ownership and you have to, to, to be aware of that. 
uh, amount of investment, amount of uh, maintenance that you require to handle for your application on the daily day-to-day -day activities. So here comes the benefits of low-code platforms, which allowing you to increase the agility and be able to provide your applications much faster than it is uh, with, the, with the traditional way of uh, developing applications. Also, it's it's uh, cost effective that it's saving your time and uh, the time of your development team and and uh, you will be able to handle challenges as well. Uh, it, it allows your organization to increase your productivity <clears throat> and uh, it again, allows, allows your organization to increase the productivity of, of your development team and enables you to have clear idea uh, when it comes to insight, it enables you to have a clear idea on how your application is performing and uh, how, how it's going on. So you can take actions and do the proper changes whenever it's required. And all of that is going to help you reach your goal, which is the uh, limitless innovation uh, for your organization. So um, let me give you a quick introduction on the Power Platform. So uh, mainly Power Platform is a local platform that can help you cover all of your business requirements and help you extend functionalities of uh, your Microsoft applications, such as Dynamics uh, and SharePoint. And uh, Okay, now from here, uh, first let me introduce myself. My name is Ahmed Oufars. I'm Microsoft uh, Team Leader, Application Team Leader at Square One. Um, the last uh, item, which my colleague here was talking about it, is while it was Microsoft uh, Power Platform. Now, let me give you a small brief about uh, Microsoft Power Platform Suite. Um, we have major four um, application, which is Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate and Virtual Agent. Power BI, it will manage uh, this application, will manage business analytics and the which we always look for it as a management level and the team level and team leaders level. It will manage the dashboard, data analytic, etc. And we have Power Apps, which will manage to support end user with low code platform as a low code platform to build your application with less knowledge on top of coding and development area. So a normal employee can build their own application, they can improve it, enhance it, and this part we will uh, make a demo on top of it today, inshallah. Power Automate, which will manage your process automation inside your organization. So it will simplify um, the process that you have it, which is you already do it in manual work, and you can automate this process using uh, Microsoft Power Automate. And Power Virtual Agent, which is the intelligent part of Microsoft Suite. Now, the whole application or Power Platform application, it's connected using a multiple type of uh, data connection. You have a predefined connector on top of the cloud, which allow you to connect in very simple way to your application. You can connect to any type of um, backend and you can connect your application to the APIs if you want. And to, because the normal organization will have some APIs for their application, so you can use the data connector. AI Builder will help you to engage the artificial intelligence inside your application. So you can um, make your, your application with the new, uh, with the future, or let's say, the, looking for the new, the, um, let's say, uh, type of application that will enhance your process inside your organization and common data service or the new name of it inside the cloud, which is Dataverse, which will allow you to do more and more on top of your application. You can save your uh, data inside it. You can enhance the structure of the data inside that uh, common data service or Dataverse. You can apply the security and whole of these applications available on top of the cloud. So you don't need to take care about how I can implement the security, who's responsible to update, let's say, uh, the security on the servers. I need to get the latest uh, installation and update to secure my application. All of these, and for all of these uh, let's say, area will be secured for you and it will be provided by Microsoft Cloud. Now, let me go to the next slide. 
I try, yeah. Now, what we can build with Power Apps. Now, Power Apps, uh, if we want to build an application, and my uh, application, I don't have a knowledge on development. I'm not a special developer. So how I can build my power, how I can build my application using Power Apps Studio. Apps Studio, you can build your own application and connect your application to multiple back to different backend, which which maybe uh, which this backend can be an Excel SharePoint or SQL or different type of backend. And you can use the artificial intelligence to enhance your application. So let's say I have some document and I want to do some uh, anal uh, analytic, uh, analytics on top of this document. Yes, I can use the artificial intelligence. I can use the AI builder to do this. And you can do more and more using your Power Apps application. Now, this will enhance your uh, environment in two area as a business user the normal employee that i have it in my organization and the it team or the developers that i have it in my organization this will enhance the duration of development the application let's say the application if i want to develop to develop it using uh, one of the programming language from scratch it will, it will take from my side let's say around one month this will be decreased to days and it, it should not exceed one week. More productivity, not only the IT team or developers can do the work, the normal employee can, can apply the changes on top of my application. They can apply their own business rule. They can enhance the application. They can change some items. Maybe there is some fields in the form need to be changed. They can change it. And from business value, this will uh, kill the gap between the business user who will be responsible on the business, which is changed day by day, and the IT team. You know that the normal behavior, sometimes my business is changed. Maybe there is some uh, new rule in my area, so my company business will be changed. This, I need to pass it to the IT team. IT team need to check with the developer how much time to be done. Now, because of business user now, they can change their application by, all, by their own hand. Now this gap will be removed and you can update your application and you can do whatever you want on top of it. Now, from, de from developer side, there is, some, uh, there is some area which is available in Azure DevOps. Now this will enhance the productivity of the developers. So let's say around 80% of the development will be on top of my Power Apps. And there is some tune up or an extra feature that I need to add it. This is, will be done using, uh, let's say one of the programming language that I'm working on top of it. Now the developer have the option to develop this, uh, this special features, which is not uh, provided by, let's say by the application itself. And Power Apps application, I mean here, and I can add the value to the application. So you will pass around 80% without using the code, and you have around 20% of your application that you need to take care about it as a developer and write your own code on top of this 20%. Now, now we, we already uh, mentioned the connector that we have it. Now, we always Get, an, uh, get in our mind that, okay, is the connector cover all the area that I wanted? From Power App perspective, yeah, there is there's a two type of connector, a predefined connector on top of the cloud, which is provided by Microsoft, and another type of connector, which is all, uh, another type of connector, which is a hybrid connector. This connector allow you to connect your on-prem application, on-prem application, which means the application that I have it inside my network in my organization. Like one of the example, SharePoint on-prem version. This application is available on my network and I want to connect it to the Power Apps because Power Apps is available on top of the cloud. I can connect it. Another type of connector, which I have it, 
Um, just a second, please. <laughs> Another type uh, of, uh, of connection, which is custom connector that I can use it um, to connect to any type of application. Type of, of, let's say, power app users, citizen developer, the normal people, professional developer, or IT. Now, let's, this is the type of application that uh, I can use it in my organization departments, which is in the, uh, in the human resource department. I can build an application to get employee feedback, vacation entry, onboarding, etc. And for sales, we can create case management and other item marketing. You can create your campaign management, chicken solution, etc. And there is another types of uh, department that you can support them using power apps like uh, operation department, finance department, and other type of department. Okay. Now for AI builder, what I will do now, I will go uh, in my application and show you sample of AI builder, which is available on top of power apps and the easy of use of it and the empowering that you will get it from this uh, AI builder solution now let me go to my application that we will present it today now today we will uh, uh, we will use a claim uh, expense we will create a claim expense request this create this um, request will manage to catch a receipt that i have it uh, let's say from restaurant or any area, and I will do a processing on top of this receipt. I will catch the item that I, I purchased it from that area and present it, let's say, on a table, and then I will submit it to my backend. Now, my backend in this application will be a SharePoint online that we have it as an application uh, in our organization, Square One, and there is a workflow which is run on top of my application. Now, from here, let me start the demo from my side. Just let me switch to the demo screen here. Okay, first let me show you my backend and then I will go to my Power Apps Studio. As you can see here, I have um, my Square One uh, SharePoint Online uh, environment and inside it I have two uh, list, first list, which is voucher request, second list, which is purchase item. The voucher request will manage to have the receipt that will contain merchant name and the total amount of the receipt and the workflow will start on top of this request. The second list will contain the purchase item, the receipt item that I have it. Okay. This is as a backend and there is a, a power automate workflow will work on top of it. Now, to access the Power Apps application studio, what I will go, what I will do, I will go to the office.com. Now, the system will take your uh, account as Office 365 account. I already logged in from my side. And from here, from the top left, I will click on the menu and select Power Apps. The system will redirect me to Power Apps uh, website, as you can see here. Now, to build your business application, you have from Power Apps main website homepage, you have three types of application that you can build it. The Canvas application from scratch, from blank, or you can build your own model-driven application or portal to extend the functionality. In our demo today, we will use the Canvas application. By clicking on the middle, uh, in the middle of the screen and create Canvas application from the blank. Now you can set your application. Um, I will name my application as, um, I believe that, let me uh, let me name it claim, claim expense request. And your application can be built to be formatted as a tablet. So you can open it uh, from your own desktop application, from desktop, um, PC, or 
you can open it from tablet, etc. or you can build it as a phone format. From my side, I will build it as a phone format, so I will open it uh, in uh, normal way in my phone layout, and it will be presentable. Okay, create. Now it will take a small amount of time just to load the studio. Now it's getting the information, loading the studio. Okay, now the system is open for you. This is the app studio that you can start working on top of it. What I will do, as you can see here, that, let me give you a brief about the app studio that we have it. Now from the top, we have the major main uh, tabs, which is home, insert, and review and action. What uh, in, in home, it will give you uh, some actions to tune up the look and feel and the size of the font, etc. And you can create a new screen. Insert, it will give you the option to add a component inside your uh, app. In view, it will represent uh, some component which is associated with data source, media, and collection, and variables that you defined it inside your application. And inside the action, you can uh, remove a component or uh, co check some collection that you retrieve it, create a power automate workflow associated with your app. Now, in the left area in the studio, you have the uh, link or navigation for the tree view of your application, which is present the screen and the items that you work on it inside the screen, insert to add some, to add the component in your application. And it's a breakdown onto multiple uh, groups. If you can see here, the input display layout, etc. And you have the data, which we you will, which you will use it to, uh, to connect your application to the backend and the media the items that you uploaded to your application and advanced tool which allow you to monitor and test your application. From the right side here, you have the properties of the component that you selected on this area. Now in my application, I will create a three screen. First screen, it will contain the, the component to catch or read my receipt. Second screen, it will have the process items or list of the items that I catch it from the receipt and third screen, it will be the message. Now from here, to, uh, let me uh, start by first screen. I will rename it as a main screen, okay? I will apply some tune up to enhance the look and feel of the screen. What I will, go, I will do, I will go to the insert. Now I will add, let's say some tune up. I will add a label. If you see, I click a label and the component direct add to my screen. Here, just let me increase the size. And I will use this label to present a background color for my application. Here, I will fill it. Let me use this. Now, okay, uh, let me uh, add some extra tune up. I want to present a welcome message for the user. Let me welcome the user who logged into my application. So here you can see that I will, this is a normal text. I will write welcome and add a space here plus. And I will use one of the redefined object for me, which is a present user information, which is user here. Dot full name. Okay. Just a click and you see that the system present welcome Ahmed Abu Faris, which is the current LinkedIn user for the system. Second, the item I want to add uh, my logo company. So the system will be presentable. In media, you have the option to add image and some other component. Now I will upload one of the image of my, from my computer. Just click on add here. And I can go to the images, select my logo. And you see that the system add the image for me, and I can tune up the location of the logo to be at the top. Now, this is the main screen. It's presentable, some branding apply on top of it. Now I will use the three screen. Now I will not reply the action that I do it in each screen. What I will do, just duplicate screen and three dot here, duplicate screen. It will give me the same copy of the screen with the items available on top of it. 
duplicate the second screen i will rename it submit and the third screen i will rename it to be message now let's start by the main screen now from insert area i have a section which is ai builder i will use receptor processor which will allow me to process the request by clicking on it the system will add for me the receptor processor component and allow me to work and allow me to upload the reset and work on top of it. Second thing that I want to do it, I will add a button. So this button will redirect me to the second screen, which is submit screen that will have a table and this table will contain the list of the receipt item. Here, I will name this button process and the action which is required from this button is to redirect me to submit screen. So just write navigate, simple as that, okay? And I will select, you see that there is an intelligence menu that allow you to, uh, that allow you to select the screen. There is no need to write it, just select it. And I will select the animation too of the redirection. Let's say cover right, and that's all. Let me go now to the second screen. I finished with the first one. Second screen, I want to present the data as a table. So there is a data table at the top here inside the insert. If I click on it, the system will add for me a table. And you can connect this table with the, the, the data source that you want to present it. OK. Now I want to connect the items from top area. Just I want to get the recept processor. I will write just the component name, which I have it in the main menu, receptor processor one dot items. Okay, now I connect the data, which I get it from the AI builder. I want to present a special field that I will catch it from the, the receipt. So from the properties, I have edit field. I can add the field which I want to be presented. I will add the name and the price of the item, total price of the item. So if I add it, you will see that the table column presented for me. Now, I want uh, to present the total price too. So I will select it. Let me, let me add a label and I will present it inside the label. So. I will add a label and I will write a text here, total price, total, just total. And here, and I want to get the total price for the whole receipt. So I will write receipt one. Oh, there is double R, sorry for that. Receipt one, yeah. Dot, total of the receipt. Now, in this, uh, in this screen, I want to send the data to be patched inside my SharePoint backend. So I will add a button and I will give him the patch procedure. Now to connect to the SharePoint, you remember that I mentioned the data section on the left menu. So if I click on it, I need to connect my application to the SharePoint. So I need to click on data now and search for SharePoint connector, simple as that. And you'll see the beauty of the connector here. Select, if you write SharePoint on search, the system will provide you with SharePoint connector. Now, if I select it, I can connect using my Office 365, Office 365 account by clicking on SharePoint. Just, you can get the site, which is you already have a permission to access it here. So I will connect to the finance site. If you select the finance site, the system will catch direct list of list and libraries which is available for you. I will select purchase item and voucher. Now I will connect. Here, this is the button. Now let's go back. Here we have the connection, sorry, in your app on the, in the left menu for purchase item and voucher. Now let's go to, back to the button. I will rename the button to be submit. Yes, and when I when I click on this button, I want to patch the information to my backend. 
So I will patch patch the information using patch statement first to the voucher request. And I will pass a parameter. If you just write a curly bracket, the system will get you the intelligence for the whole columns that you have it inside your backend. So I will use title to push my, uh, let's say, restaurant name, which will be Merchant. OK, voucher. I want to get it from receipt processor one. Dot Merchant name. Merchant name. Second item, I want to send the um, total total amount, which is this processor one dot total. Yeah. Now this is the first item that I want to patch it to my backend. Now, second item that I want to patch it, which is the purchase item, which I will get it from, from the AI processor. What I will do, I will write the same, but this is, will be a list of items. So to loop on each item and send it to my backend, I will use for all functionality, okay? And inside it, I will use um, the list upon items, Okay, reset plus one dot items. I will loop inside each item that I have it, which is purchase item. Yes. And then, then I want to patch it. To my backend, which is, it will be purchase item list. Now, what is the data that I want to send it? I will uh, send title as an item title, which will be um, here, if I click, it will be name of the item plus, I want to send total, total cost of the item itself, which will be here, um, total, total, total price, and, <coughs> I will send the merchant name because it's the restaurant name to be saved inside my application, which is voucher, come from where. I will take this, just copy and paste it here. Now, the scenario to send the information is done from my site here. Now, if this scenario is complete, just I want to navigate the application to thank you message. Navigate. Here I will select to message and I will select another type of transition, semicolon. That's all. Now from here, let me go to the last screen in tree view, which is the message. I will represent a small message here for the end user. Thank you for submitting. And you can change it. Later on, yeah, here I will represent, thank you. Thank you, your request for, thank you for submitting your request, your request. Okay, let me just tune it up to be in the middle and make it pop. Now, my application is complete. Let me uh, let me now preview the application. Now, as you can see here, what I develop is what I see in my application run in the preview. So as you can see here, I just preview the application. This give me the presentation mode, how it will look like in your phone. Now let's start using our application and test it. First, I will click on a scan. Let me go back. I have some receipt. I will upload one of the receipt. Now, as you can see here, the AI builder start to process my receipt and analyze the item inside it. Now it catch all the item inside uh, the receipt that I have it, like merchant name and list of items. Now, if I click process the receipt, the system should redirect me to submit area. 
and you can see here the list of items that I have it, each item with the price of the item and the total cost of the receipt. It's available at the bottom. Now, I want to submit this information to my backend. Just if I click on submit, the system will take the whole information and submit it to my backend. Now my application submit the information. Thank you, message presented. Let's go back to the backend, which is the finance website and see, do we have the data? As you can see here in precious item, the system sent all information each each, uh, each one, like uh, the first item, total price, and the merchant name or the receipt come from where. And if I go to the voucher request, I will see that, okay, I have the record here. This is the receipt, and this is the total amount of the receipt, and the status of the workflow is started and it's in vending on the approval process. So this is, uh, how we can build our application using Power Apps Studio. And here you can see the simple process that I want to implement it. It does not take too much time. And this is the beauty of Power App Studio and Power Apps application using low code platforms. From here, I will hand it uh, over to my colleagues, Nader. Um, Nader. Yes, thanks a lot, uh, Ahmed. Um, so, uh... Thank you, everyone, for for you know attending the session. And uh, um, you know, uh, first of all, I apologize for the little bit of drama that happened with Ferasi's laptop <laughs> shut down <laughs> instantly. So we had to switch to Ahmed. Thank you, Ahmed, for your efforts. Now, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen, as you see, um, the power that you can harness using this power platforms is, you know, your ability to build very smart and in, and, and intelligent applications at you know at a very short amount of times and with minimum efforts now uh, we leverage uh, ai builder using uh, the ai builder we were able to uh, you know extract data from the receipts and you see the quality of the receipts that that was there uh, we were able to uh, pass on the information using the the connectors uh, the built in connectors that are available uh, again built in 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 the in, in part of the power apps uh, power platforms and definitely, that's just the glance of it. You can also leverage the workflow to automate any any process. So now, what you've seen after submitting those those requests to your backend systems, that same information can be routed through uh, the Power Automate, which is the workflow engine of Power Platforms that will allow you to, you know, uh, you know, build any kind of workflows you have and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, manage the entire life cycle of the data. Of course, that comes along with, you know, uh, the Power BI at the beginning, it will give you a visibility and analytics of what's going on. And, you know, the Power Virtual Agent, which is, you know, we did not, you know, focus on it a, a, a much, but again, that's that's includes lots of, you know, uh, uh, addition to that. You can also have the, the chat bot. Uh, that will allow you to interact with with with, with your uh, you know customers and you with your uh, you know employees if required, uh, and also you don't forget the Microsoft RPA also, which is uh, which is again uh, you know power to complete the entire offering. So now no need to worry about dark data, unstructured data, with power with the with with the with the strength of the power platform and the coverage the spectrum of of the coverage that that it offers. You don't have to worry anymore about anything that that you know dark data or unstructured data you can manage your entire data you can also you know automate a, any kind of services you can expose it to your you know uh, external parties be it your suppliers your customers your contractors and so on so um that you know uh, concludes the session from our end uh, we are uh, very happy to you know uh, take any questions you might have any clarification you might have and uh, you know the session will be is, is recorded. That's why we have put everyone on mute just to, to make it a clean recording. So um, we will share the recording of this session for those who are who have asked for it uh, in the beginning, and uh, we will be happy to take any questions you might have. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Nader and, and Ahmed for, for, for catching up with this uh, technical difficulty. You know, actually, 
I'm sorry, sorry, really sorry, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for this interruption because I had a problem on my computer and uh, suddenly it's switched off. Uh, luckily, we have our uh, experts here to, to step in place. So uh, we, ha we had a couple of questions here that has been asked and uh, it's quite uh, interesting to, to, uh, to answer it. So the first area where we, it's, it's asking what, what are the level of, of programming knowledge that is required to start doing uh, development on, on Power Apps or start creating applications on Power Apps. Actually, actually Power Apps is a very uh, uh, citizen developer kind of uh, oriented uh, approach. So it allows you to easily develop your application using drag and drop functionality and uh, uh, with the minimum requirement of uh, creating some kind of commands and you don't need to be an expert developer to come up with extraordinary uh, uh, apps on your power apps so and it can it can whenever you have a pro developer you can extend this functionality to reach out for for example for a new level of uh, innovation so imagine that possibility when you have a platform like this and you can extend it using the pro developer features to reach your uh, goals and uh, also so one of the questions is about uh, capturing data from invoices uh, definitely that is uh, available as as you've seen in ahmed's uh, demo uh, there's the ability to to extract data from receipts the same concept applies for invoices there is uh, two ways to capture this by uh, using uh, AI uh, builder, which is part of our platform, or even more, you can extend it to the to using to, to use the uh, cognitive services provided by Microsoft, which is a very powerful AI to, uh, cognitive services uh, APIs that allows you to uh, handle smart and, and intelligent uh, scenarios. Yeah, uh, thank you, Firas. And also, we have uh, passed this information in our example to SharePoint uh, sites and, and list. But yes, uh, the, we can definitely uh, you know, pass this information to Excel sheet, XML file, or any third party application, your ERP, uh, whether you are using Dynamics or any other ERP, definitely we can pass this information there as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have another question about licenses. Um, actually, the way Power Apps is, is licensed, uh, it's based on how, how you're using the power, how you're intending to use the Power Apps. So basically, if you're using the Power Apps to extend some functionalities in SharePoint uh, or, you, or, or, or your internal application of Microsoft, uh, I think it's, it's going out of the box from there. But if you're intending to build applications uh, that connects to different data sources and utilize what we call the premium features, uh, such as connecting to an API or something, then at that stage you will require to uh, have a license. And uh, the licenses are in two different ways. It's per app or per uh, user. So the first option is to get it per app, which allows you to have uh, one app or two apps actually that runs for all of the users for uh, an amount of, uh, monthly subscription and the other options allow you to run unlimited number of apps for all of the subscribed users. So we have a question about uh, you know using uh, power apps for complex forms again that's for sure the demo because of the, uh, for the sake of time we kept it very simple form but definitely you, you have lots of uh, features and, 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 and tools there to build, uh, you know, include tables, drop downs, list, radio buttons, you know, and, and multi tabs. So definitely, uh, you know, you can make it very complex uh, and, and, you know, to, to you know, cover your, your uh, needs in terms of business, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, and regardless of the complexity of the form. Yeah, Mr. Arshad, so um, uh, the Power Platform itself is cloud-only uh, solution. So uh, Power Apps, uh, Power Platform, including Power Apps and Power Automate, they are only on, on Microsoft Cloud. Uh, 
but definitely you can use them within any on-prem application. So there is a connector that you can run on-prem that will allow uh, you know, uh, power apps to connect to any uh, backend application within your uh, ecosystem and uh, pass and read data from this, uh, from this application. So definitely you can use it. Uh, Firas, do you want to add any comment here as well? Uh, I, yeah, actually, that is that is uh, uh, correct because you know uh, you ca you cannot have your apps as uh, on-prem solution, but you can definitely connect it to your on-prem through something called uh, data gateway or connection gateway get gateway that can connect your on-prem to your cloud-based uh, environment. So. You can have complex scenarios where you have what we call as a hybrid uh, kind of uh, implementation, allowing you to have part of your environment and your requirements on-prem and extend it to your cloud. So, uh, So I think uh, we have some questions in the comment uh, or at the chatting uh, area uh, in terms of how much does it cost? Uh, actually, uh, it's a subscription based. It starts from uh, 10 USD uh, uh, for the per app subscription and 40 USD for the uh, like the, the uh, unlimited number, which is called the per, uh, per user subscription. And definitely for the AI and the other modules, there are different subscriptions for it. All these prices are listed on Microsoft uh, Microsoft uh, website. Um, in terms of robotic process automation, how this tool will help? Um, actually, actually here, uh, in terms of robotic process automation, there's something called the Power Automate. Actually, Power Automate uh, helps you automate your business and your business processes. And part of Power Automate there is something called UI flows, which allows you to create bots that can uh, act as uh, and do the function of robotic process automation by mimicking the, the actions that a user can, they can, can do on a daily basis on their computer. Uh, this, is, this is actually a very powerful feature. And uh, uh, we have done a session last, uh, last year, last November, on uh, how we can use Power Automate uh, as a robotic process automation with a combination of all of the uh, Microsoft Flow and the Microsoft Power Automate features, uh, where we have done uh, an implementation where you can automate the process of invoice capturing, for example, and saving it to a legacy ERP solution. So uh, in terms of robotic process automation, Microsoft has gone a very good uh, yeah. uh, job there. Uh Thank you, Firas. So, uh, Sarah, thank you for this question. It's a very good question. Now, uh, this is the power of, you know, of, of Microsoft and, and its platforms. It covers all aspects of automation, so you don't have to leave anything behind. Now, what, what robotic process automation can help here? Imagine a scenario where, you, like Firas is saying, there's a legacy app which doesn't have any connectors, any API, and only can be accessible through the, through the interface. Or, let's say you want to update something on a third-party website where, again, there are no web services, no API, no connectors, what you can do. Then the, the, this entire you know, solution can, can export all the data that are required and hand it over to the bot. The, uh, the bot can go and you know, log into that third-party website as a human and, and feed this data or download and extract data. Let's say you want to read your exchange rates on a daily basis when, before you calculate, for example, the, the, the currency conversion. And this exchange rates are available on an internet website. This is where the RPA comes. And, and that's what the beauty of this entire solution. It covers all you know, uh, the, your require your automation needs. Absolutely, absolutely another. Um, we have another question here about Power Automate and uh, whether it can show you the approval history of a document library from SharePoint. So basically, uh, this can be handled. This can be done. Actually, uh, Power Automate is uh, can, 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 can help you automate your workflows inside SharePoint. And definitely you can capture the history. You can at any time check the flow and see even where the process is currently now and what is expected in the next step. So you can have 
a visual uh, a visualization of your workflow and see it step by step and see where is your flow or where is your workflow is standing right now and what is expected and you have also the ability to do escalations and to do like uh, for example escalation whenever like if you see the, the the workflow has been stopped with or has been pending with someone for a long time you can have an automatic escalation that it can be redirected or reassigned to someone else who can uh, fasten the, the, the uh, process itself. Yeah, uh, and, and remember any data that you have, as long as it's accessible, it means you can, you can uh, bring it on and you can show it and display it into your Power Apps uh, application. So as long as we can access the data, even let's say it's not SharePoint, it could be some, some other app. You want to free, uh, read some history, some logs. As long as this information is accessible, it means you can present it in uh, in uh, Power your Power App application. How can to connect Power App to our system, Oracle JD Edwards? Uh, we have uh, built-in connectors. I think uh, Firas, maybe you can confirm if you have any out of the box JD JD, uh, JD Edwards uh, connector. But if not, we can we can leverage web services. And uh, we have done projects about JD Edwards, uh, you know, uh, integration using web service. So I'm, I'm sure it works. Yeah, um, actually, I'm not sure if there is for Oracle JD Edwards, but uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, another, it's pretty easy to connect it through uh, the uh, API. So you can have your APIs connected to Power Apps where you can retrieve your data. Even more, you can utilize the RPA technology if you if you're dealing with some kind of uh, legacy system that doesn't provide the APIs. So there are many ways to do the connecting. And uh, yeah, I think it's prob yeah. uh, probably possible. We, 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 we can we, look this up for you and check it out. Sure, we will get back if there's any JD Edwards out of the box connector, but we have built, uh, you know, uh, supplier portals. We have built uh, invoice automation end to end uh, on, on top of JD Edwards, uh, including vendor master, you know, um, uh, management, uh, vendor uh, onboarding and uh, invoice submission and auto processing using the intelligent capture as well and posting the liability. And that can be applied to not only JD Edwards, any other ERP as well. Definitely, yeah. Uh, when it comes to free version, um, actually, this is uh, it's it's not what it's a, def a definition of what is free. So basically, you have your own subscription. Definitely, you have you'd have to have your own subscription of Office 365, and uh, you can extend some of the functionalities of uh, SharePoint and Dynamics using Power Apps, uh, which is embedded there already, and you don't need to have a license about that and uh, if you're mentioning here by free you can have something called as free trial for one month you can go ahead to microsoft uh, website and sign up for a free trial it's going to give you a fully fledged solution for one month so you can uh, give it a, a test and i really encourage everybody here to like uh, get their hand dirty and uh, start exploring the the uh, functionality of Power Apps. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So mainly Power Apps is, is more meant for, for uh, the EA Microsoft have invested a lot of making Power Apps very easy to use, very easy to develop your application. This is the true definition of a low-code platform, allowing you to create great applications without the need to have a pro developer who can uh, uh, pro developer who can have technical or deeply technical uh, experience in developing applications. So you can create applications very fast with. Uh, uh, very quick and uh, very agile and doing changes to this application is a matter of drag and drop so uh, it's really uh, great application 
So, uh, Mr. Omer, uh, you know, uh, sorry that you've missed it, but we will be sharing the recording. Uh, what we are talking about in general is Microsoft Power Platforms. Uh, and uh, the demo that we showed is, uh, was about um, uh, reimbursement uh, processing. So, we will share the recording. And, uh, you know, uh, we will be happy also at any later point of time, you know, you want to contact with us to clarify any, any, any points. Uh, we will be happy to meet and, and have a special one-to-one -one meeting as well. Um, Mr. Ahmed, the, the bah, actually, actually we have uh, we have done a, a webinar or a, a live demo uh, last year uh, on November on uh, uh, on Power App and Power Automate specifically and using it as an RPA. We have done a scenario where we have uh, uh, processed an invoice and uh, uh, insert. The invoice details and attached it inside an ERP, a legacy ERP that sits on prem. So we will be happy to share this, the link to, uh, for this for uh, with you, so you can like uh, go and uh, uh, check it on demand. And definitely there will be some kind of uh, future sessions where we can highlight more scenarios and more functionalities. Okay, so I think we have reached uh, the end. Do we have any more questions just before we conclude? Um, yeah, I think that's the end of the session. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending. Uh, we will be happy also to take any questions offline. So if you have any doubts or any you know requirements to be discussed, we'll be more than happy to do it. Our teams are, are available and uh, you know we can have one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions. Uh, for the time being, thank you very much for joining. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Nadir. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank um, you. Gentlemen. See you soon, inshallah. inshallah.